Welcome back to the JSFL. We've got after week six podcast come to you. And it was a very good week. A lot of upsetting games we saw, but very good week of JSFL. And we're halfway through the season now, so we got another good half to go. Let's go in with that week six recap, why don't we? Bats at Fishers. The Bats with the W here. And puts Minneapolis to three and three, and themselves the bats to three and three as well. Twenty to two was the game. Um, Fishers could not get anything going. Daxon with four interceptions. It was brutal. And um, Phillips did what he needed to. And that offense was able to get going when it needs to, and they got the win in Thursday night at Minneapolis. So huge loss for Minneapolis, and I thought they for real, man, but. Kind of like last year, just aren't able to get those big wins when they need to. And now we got the next game, Sunday. Earthquake at Businessmen. The Businessmen put up quite the fight against the Earthquake, but not able to get it done. They do finish the game. Uh, Foster, pretty good. Granette didn't do half bad. But yeah, pretty good game there. Nothing too much. Businessmen did do great, though. Just couldn't able to finish it. Um, then you got Phoenix at Gila, or not Phoenix, Predators at Gila Monsters. The Predators with an upset victory going to 3-3 three and three now. And in Phoenix, the two-time defending champions, 2-4. and four. Really rough start for the Gila Monsters. All those people that left kind of took a toll on them. But yeah, um, was not expecting that. They came into Phoenix and got the win. Huge win for the Predators there as they are trying to keep going on this streak. Or get a streak going, I mean. Then you got the Hounds at the Natives. Hounds kept themselves in the old game, just not able to do it. Even though they have some injuries on the outside. I mean, the Hounds got some injuries too. Frank Jog, geez, they cannot really get a good replacement for him. I mean, Soto got that touchdown. But Victor Victoria said not great at all last week. And we'll see if they can get that problem figured out. Um, then you got the power at the win. The win with an upset win. A lot of upsets this week. I don't know if you can call it upsets. Because the win, man, they've been battling. They beat some, or they've, they've kept it close to like every team they've played. And they finally got one of those wins against Detroit. Had it at home. Big game. A team that's also struggling, but it's a good team nonetheless. And the Kansas City win, get the W. And then to finish it off, you had the... Oh, wait. Then Forcers at the Musicians. Yes, a good game. Um, then Forcers struggled, man. They could not get too much going to that last drive when they finally scored. And touchdown. But besides that, not much going on the Forcers side. Cole Nicholas looks pretty good for the Musicians. As he has to do that one more game as Seth Skies has an injury. But yeah, very good win for New Orleans with the backup QB. And puts them in good standing in their division. With all that being said now, let's go into the power rankings. Number 12, Minneapolis. Uh, Minneapolis just, ooh, I don't know, man. It was really a battle like where I wanted to put any of these guys. From like 12 to 8. I could put them anywhere on the list. But I just had to pick. And I'm going to go with Minneapolis. 3-3. Three and three, Not the worst record on here, but... Those wins, I mean, they've been all right, but they haven't really shown a huge, great game for them yet. And I haven't seen it, so I'm just going to put them at 12. 11, New York. I thought about putting them at 12, but they hung in there with New Orleans. Or not New Orleans. um, L.A., my bad. But, yeah, it was a great try from New York. Just not too great of a team yet. Same thing with Atlanta, but they won against Phoenix. Phoenix, I don't know, though. They might not be as good as advertised with all those losses like Baxter and um, Daryl Shot was on that defense. Just a lot of players that are gone now, but we'll see what they can do. Or, well, I guess we're talking about Atlanta. My bad. Um, Hudson, he's good on his year two. The defense trying to make some things happen. But, yeah, we're going to be at 10 for now. Number nine, Charlotte. Putting the pounding down on Minneapolis at Minneapolis on Thursday. Moves them up in the rankings. Not too much to say here. Number eight, Cincinnati. Hung in with Seattle. One of the top dogs of the league. And I got to give them credit for that. They fought against some good teams. They have lost pretty big though into some games. But I'm going to give Cincinnati some credit. Put that on number eight. 
Number seven, Phoenix. Whew, two and four. Rough going right now for these Gila Monsters, man. They got to wake up. And if not, they're going to be out of the playoffs before you know it. And yeah, man, Phoenix rough right now. Number six, Detroit. Tough loss against Kansas City, but this team is still fighting. Taylor Little's finally waking up. And yeah, this team could be dangerous. They're not done just yet. Number five, another two and four team, Kansas City win. Battling. And they finally got a W last week. And I think they can keep battling with any team you put up against them. So I'll put them at number five. Number four, the Houston Enforcers. Tough, tough game against New Orleans. Lost to the backup QB and Cole Nicholas. And I still think they're one of the top teams, but just a really rough week last week. Number three, LA. Almost losing to New York is not something you want to see from one of the top teams in the league. But everyone has those rough games, just like Houston last week. But LA still got the win, so we're going to keep them up there. Speaking of the team that beat Houston, number two, New Orleans Musicians getting the win with the backup quarterback, Cole Nicholas. Chris Johnson is going insane, by the way. He had a crazy game last week. Uh, that defense is doing great. And the offense is clicking. So, number two. And number one, Seattle Natives just going insane. Kermit Poe still in the MVP race very much. Um, offense been doing good. The defense without with all those injuries is still clicking. So, we got to give credit where credit's due. Talking about the MVP race, let's bring it in to your top 10. Number 10, Sean Richardson of the Detroit Power. And we'll look at the stat sheets. Actually, I think we did that last week. So, we'll save that for next week. But number 10, Sean Richardson. Number 9, Ross Williams of the LA Earthquake. Number 8, Chris Johnson of the New Orleans Musicians. Number 7, Taylor Little of the Detroit Power. Number 6, Willie Rogers of the Kansas City Wind. Number 5, Warren Jones of the Houston Enforcers. Number 4, Brian Tepps of the Phoenix Yale Monsters. Number 3, Chad Harrison of the Kansas City Wind. Number 2, Roland Lemus of the LA Earthquake. And number 1, Kermit Poe of the Seattle Natives. Your Offensive Rookie of the Year, number 3, Hogan Miller. Number 2, Vincent Morgan. Oh, Hogan Miller, wide receiver, Atlanta. Morgan, tight end, Seattle. And Chad Harrison, quarterback of Kansas City. Now, the Defensive Rookie of the Year, number three, Andrew Saunders, safety on uh, the Cincinnati. Number two, Zachary Wong, linebacker of Charlotte. And number one, Elijah Costley, the corner from Phoenix. And then that is your Offense and Defensive Rookies of the Year. Your playoff picture, the East is controlled by the Bats. The South, the Musicians. The West, the Natives. And the North, still Minneapolis. The fifth seed is the LA Earthquake and the sixth seed, the Enforcers. In the hunt is Atlanta and Kansas City. Your Offensive Player of the Week, Taylor Little. 16 attempts, 128 yards, two touchdowns, and three broken tackles. Also had two receptions for 42 yards and a, touch, a touchdown. It's a good week for Little as he's waking up. And your Defensive Player of the Week, Tyrone McDermott of the LA Earthquake, the defensive tackle. Well, switch from edge to DT this year. Five solo tackles, four assists, three tackles for loss, three sacks, a fumble, and a safety. Huge week for Tyron McDermott as he had a great game against the businessman. So, yeah, there you go for that. And then we go into your offense and defensive stats. Offense, number 12 is the businessman. Number 11, the, the bats. Number 10, the Hounds. The 9, the Predators. 8, the Wind. 7, the Gila Monsters. 6, the Fishers. 5th, the Earthquake. 4th, the Power. 3rd, the Musicians. 2nd, the Enforcers. 1st, the Natives. Running Offense. Number 12, Bats. 11, Wind. 10, Earthquake. 9, Musicians. 8th, Businessmen. 7th Predators, 6th Fishers, 5th Natives, 4th Hounds, 3rd Gill Monsters, 2nd Enforcers, 1st Power. Now for the passing offense, 12th Businessmen, 11th Gila Monsters, 10th Hounds, 9th Predators, 8th Power, 7th Enforcers, 
6th Fishers, 5th Bats, 4th Musicians, 3rd Earthquake, 2nd Natives, 1st Wind. And then for your defense, number 12, Wind, number 11, Power, 10, Bats, 9, Hounds, 8, Natives, 7th, Businessmen, 6, Predators, 5th, Fishers, 4th, Earthquake, 3rd, Gill Monsters, 2nd, Musicians, 1st, Enforcers, Rushing Defense, 12th, Hounds, 11th, Bats, 10th, Businessmen, 9th, Gill Monsters, 8th, Predators, 7th, Natives, 6th, Musicians, 5th, Fishers, 4th, Wind, 3rd, Power, 2nd, Earthquake, and 1st, Enforcers. Now, passing defense, 12th, Wind, 11th, Power, 10th, Predators, 9th, Natives, 8th, Bats, 7th, Earthquake, 6th, Fishers, 5th, Musicians, 4th, Businessmen, 2nd, or 3rd, Gill Monsters, 2nd, Enforcers, and 1st, Hounds. So that's your offense and defense. And yeah, I think all we got left this week for a short podcast will be the lineup for next week. So let's bring that in then. For number week seven, we got the Natives at the Gila Monsters. And I'm going to go with the Natives pretty easily here. The Gila Monsters struggling. And the Natives, I think, are pretty hot right now. So give me the Natives on the road. Bats at Predators for Sunday. Ooh, two teams off good wins. Give me the Predators in a win here at home. I think both these teams are dangerous, but I think the Predators are going to edge out the bats in this one. Enforcers at Businessmen for your next Sunday game. I'm going to go Enforcers with a bounce back against the Businessmen. I think it could be close, but give me Houston. Earthquake at Hounds. I'm going to go with the Earthquake again. No upset so far here. I think the Earthquake are just going to win this game. Musicians at Wind. Ooh, back up. I don't know. Wind is pretty suspect pass defense. Give me the Musicians. I think it will be a really close game, but give me the Musicians in this one. And then the Power at the Fishers. Give me the Detroit Power. I think with the Fishers slips up, slip ups as of recent, they aren't going to be ha- able to handle this Detroit Power team. And I think it will be a win. But that is it on this before week seven, after week six podcast, whatever you want to call it. And I will see you on Thursday night for Natives and Gila Monsters.